February was kind of a steady month. Let's talk about it. Hello there, welcome back to the channel. I am Grand Moff Tony. Well, it is the first video of the month, and you know what that all means. It is time once again to have a look at the new additions to the collection. It is time for fine additions. Fine addition to my collection. <laughs> Yes, welcome to February's Fine Editions. It's time to have a look at what we picked up this month. Some pre-orders, a pretty decent toy hunt, and a bargain or two. Let's get into them. The first edition for the month of February was the Jedi Survivor B1 Battle Droid. Now, I had this guy on pre-order from GameStop, and I actually ended up paying on the day a pretty low price, because back when the Obi-Wan Kenobi wave came out, I pre-ordered a handful of those figures, and then found them all in a Walmart, so I was able to move my $5 deposit for those pre-orders and lump them into the B1 Battle Droid, which knocked a massive chunk off the price. Obviously, I've mentioned in the past I'm a massive fan of the B1 mold. I love the fact that you can fold him up. It's great. I love the fact that you can store his blaster and his backpack, and I think this is a really cool alternate color scheme for a B1 battle droid. I will take as many of these B1 repaints as you want to put out. You want to do a commander droid, pilot droid, engineer droid, just slap some paint on these guys and I will buy them all. So that got the month off to a pretty good start. If you've been following our Toy Hunt series, you know what the next pickup was. At the brilliant store called Time Travelers, I grabbed the original Redline Resistance Trooper. I don't have a ton to say about this guy because he obviously is just a generic trooper, but it was great to see so many of those Redline figures on the shelves, and this was one that I missed back in the day, and I love the little feature where you can flip the helmet up and you can see the little guy inside. I absolutely love it. With it being an older figure, the articulation does leave a lot to be desired, but I'll take what I can get. Resistance Trooper, welcome to the collection. Next up from the same store on the same toy hunt was the Redline Force Awakens Kylo Ren. Now, this was a figure that I initially skipped out on because I have the Starkiller base variant of this figure, but I am absolutely in love with this Kylo Ren figure. I have no idea what it is. I don't know if it's the solid engineering. Is it? Is it the appearance? Because this is one of my favorite Kylo Ren appearances. His Force Awakens garb just... Oh, it, I just have such a strong connection with it because I've done this cosplay in the past and it just feels amazing. <laughs> it's crazy because I've just talked about the Resistance Trooper and how it's old articulation and it leaves a lot to be desired. But I just don't feel that with this Kylo Ren figure. I absolutely love it. Honestly, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the quality of the soft goods, which just feel so premium on the figure. I don't know if it's the incredibly unique design on the lightsaber and how they got the blade to be removable while having all three blades attached to the same piece. Or maybe it just calls out to the way that The Force Awakens just reinvigorated the inner Star Wars fan in me and got me back into the fandom. Maybe that's why I have such a strong attachment to this figure. I don't know, but it's awesome. I'm really glad I got it. I got a sweet deal on it, and I am very, very happy. Next, I feel like I have some explaining to do, because if you watched that video, you know that we went out in search of Maul, and we found him at Time Travelers, but they were charging, I think, $45 for him, and I just... I just couldn't justify picking him up for that price, and it was a, a powerful moment of, of self-control winning out at the end of the day. So in the spirit of rewarding that incredible self-control that is so uncharacteristic to someone with such an addictive personality like me, I decided to reward myself, and I bought him online. I don't know why I feel like by finding him in the wild and walking away and not paying that full price, I unlocked this figure to be bought online, if that makes sense. I left this figure on the shelf in Time Travelers because $45 was a lot to pay for a figure that was still available at retail. And yeah, no, I didn't find more on a shelf at retail prices, but I did find so many of this line on the shelf all at retail prices, so I figured, you know what? I'm gonna spoil myself just this once, just to make sure that I do end up getting this figure. I found him online, I found him at retail price, I bought him. And now that I have him, 
What a figure. What an exceptional figure. It is so good. The legs are so sturdy. The lightsaber is so cool. And I love this little grimace that he's wearing on his face. It just is so characteristically Maul. And I love it. So yeah, I am primarily an in-store collector. I wanted to find this figure in store. I found him in store, but I wasn't gonna pay that price for him, so I bought him online for retail, and I have no shame. No shame whatsoever. These are my rules, I'll break them if I want to. <laughs> Welcome to the collection mall. It really was starting to look like February was going to be a bit of a dry spell for collecting, because I had found a handful of figures, I was happy with what I had, and I was just gonna ride out the rest of the month. But then, you may have noticed the other day that GameStop, I think they were offering something like $8.30 off of all their gaming greats figures, the ones that they've been trying to shift for a while now. And that seemed like the perfect opportunity to swoop in and pick up the Knight Brother Archer. Now, as you know, I've seen this guy on the shelf during multiple toy hunts. It was just one of those figures that I was just like, I don't think I want to pay full price for that one. It's a, it's a generic, faceless grunt of a character. So I'll wait for him to go on sale. He went on sale, I was true to my word, and I got him. I think these Knight Brother figures are incredible. I think they are brilliant. Making excellent reuse of the Sith Apprentice Maul body and coming with a variety of primitive and mean looking weapons. I am thoroughly satisfied with this figure and I am thoroughly satisfied with the price that I paid for him. So welcome to the collection, Knight Brother Archer. And finally for the month of February, as part of the same sale in GameStop, I also grabbed the 13th Battalion Clone Trooper. Now, this was another figure, exactly the same kind of scenario as the Knight Brother Archer. I'd seen it a few times in GameStop, but, you know, $26.99, it's, it's just, it's a lot to pay for a trooper. I'm more of a collector of characters, and for the longest time, I wasn't going to collect troopers at all. I was just going to collect characters, but there are so many cool variations, and you can usually get quite a decent bargain on them. It's just not something that I'm prepared to pay full price for. With that being said, this clone trooper body is awesome. You can get it into so many natural and militant poses. It just looks great. I'm considering going back and picking up another one so I can build up kind of a Fallen Order display for my Cal Kestis. But at the same time, if I just come away with one and I can instead build up a display of different variations of clone troopers, I'll be happy with that as well. I just think the kind of, uh, the kind of mustard color that they've got going on on here just looks so cool for a clone trooper. It's a really decent looking Legion and I'm really glad I have it in my collection. So those were all the figures I added to my collection in the month of February. As I say, it was kind of, kind of a steady month. There wasn't a massive amount of figures that came in. There hasn't been a tremendous amount of news surrounding the Black Series this month been kind of a dry spell, but it's definitely enabled me to reevaluate a couple of my personal rules when it comes to my collection about, you know, prices I am prepared to pay because it's all over the internet that the price of this line is just going up and up and up. And eventually you have to kind of decide, you know, where is your line in the sand? You know, what are you prepared to pay for a Star Wars The Black Series figure? For me, if it's a character and it's a character I like, I don't think I have a cap. I probably don't. If it's a character and it's a character I'm not like 100% invested in, then maybe I loiter around the kind of $25 mark. But obviously, as I've demonstrated, when it comes to troopers, I am very prepared to sit and wait for them to go on sale. I don't think that retail or especially not GameStop retail prices are particularly worth it when it comes to just a trooper variant. With that being said, I did want to throw out here that what with all the toy hunts that I've been doing recently that seem like they've been coming up bust, just because I personally don't find a figure to add to my collection on every toy hunt I hit, doesn't really say much about the state of distribution in my area. If I were a new collector, I would be having a field day with some of the scores that I have been able to find. The fact of the matter is, I have been in this game for a few years, my collection is somewhere in the low to mid 300s, so when I scroll through my Excel file of figures that I'm missing and figures that I have, I see a lot more green than I do white. What I think is great is for someone who is just getting into the line, 
to be able to walk into a, a Best Buy and find the Kenobi Vader, which I will gladly put my hands up and say I think it's by far the second best Vader figure in the entire line. I think it's great that so many of the most important characters in the line are so available right now. And also, as I've demonstrated, sometimes I find a figure that I don't have, and I'm just not feeling it that day. I'm just not feeling either picking up that figure or paying the price for it or whatever it is. I think I am firmly out of my collecting phase where it was a case of see it, don't have it, buy it. I was in that phase for a long time <laughs> and it does call back to some very familiar and very uncomfortable feelings that link back into issues that I've had in the past. So yeah, with all that said, kind of a steady month, kind of slow for news, but I'm still in a place where I'm enjoying this hobby and I'm still having a lot of fun with it. If you haven't already, do check out our toy hunt videos. We have a lot of fun just hitting the road and seeing how many stores we can fit in in a certain amount of time. Or if you're interested in seeing what kind of characters I'd like to see come to the Black Series, do check out my Wishlist series. We're working our way through the prequel films right now. We will be covering every single Star Wars property, movies, TV shows, the works. And of course, we'll be back same time next month to have a look at what we picked up in the month of March. I've got some great toy hunts going on this month. I'm attending a couple of conventions. It should be good. In the meantime, I've been Grand Moff Tony. Those were February's fine editions. You may subscribe when ready. <laughs> some pre-orders. Bollocks. Wank. Okay.